Hello, hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to use a sewing machine, as well as pointing out some common beginner mistakes. A sewing machine has two spools, a top spool, which you can buy in store, and a bottom spool called a bobbin, which is this empty spool that comes with a sewing machine, and you need to thread the spool yourself. Sewing machines can get complicated, and I'm just going to teach you the bare minimum that you need to be able to use it. I've decided to make a good old-fashioned slideshow sewing machine part for you. You don't actually need to know the names, but I'm putting it here so you can reference it if you want to. How many of you are actually old enough to remember the days before PowerPoint presentations? I'm going to teach you how to thread the bobbin and the sewing machine, but if your machine is already threaded, I'm going to put up a timestamp here that you can skip to to get to the actual sewing projects. Alright, the first thing we need to do is thread the empty bobbin. Put your spool on the spool pin, take the thread, and pull it through the thread guide as shown on the directions printed on the sewing machine. One thing that may not be clear to beginners from the picture is that you have to place it inside this little hook. It's a lever and it helps keep the tension. The next mistake people do is they don't pay attention to the direction of the rotation. You're being instructed to wrap the thread around the screw, but it's important that you wrap it clockwise. Your empty bobbin should be found under this bottom panel. Remove the bobbin. This is what it looks like. It's a clear spool with holes in the top and the base. We will place the bobbin on the bobbin winder. If you're taking out the bobbin, be sure to place it here so you don't lose it. Next up in the instructions, we will run the thread by the barrel of the bobbin and out the hole in the top. Then push the bobbin winder to the right locked position. To make the machine start, you need to turn on the machine. Once you've done that, we're going to fill the bobbin. Hold the thread for a second or two after pressing the foot pedal. If you don't hold the thread for a second when you're starting the machine, you're going to lose the ends and it's not going to wind the bobbin. So make sure you hold that thread for like a second. Once that bobbin starts filling up, you can immediately let go, and the main spool is going to fill up the bobbin. You just need to press and hold the foot pedal until the bobbin stops turning. When the bobbin's full, it'll slow down and stop on its own. Move the bobbin winder back to the unlock position and remove the bobbin. We're going to place it in the bottom here for now, but in order to thread the bottom, we have to first thread the top. Let's move on to threading the needle. Take the thread and run it through the thread guide as you did before. It may still be there from when you threaded the bobbin. Again, remember to catch the tiny lever when you do this. So now we're just going to follow the numbered directions. They're printed right on the machine and it's really simple. So number one just shows that you pull the thread downward. Follow the numbered arrows, two, three, and four. When you're doing number four, make sure to loop the thread around the thread take up. Make sure that the foot presser is in the upper position first. While my machine does have a threading function, not all machines do, so I'm just gonna show you how to thread the machine manually. I'm using a needle threader. I want the thread to be going from forwards to backwards. So I'm putting the needle threader backwards so that when I pull the thread out, the thread will be going the correct direction. Once the needle is threaded, place the thread through the slot in the foot presser and run the thread backwards. Now that we've got the needle threaded from the top of the machine, we're going to be able to use that thread in order to thread the bottom. 
take the thread of the bobbin and slide it under this little metal part. It's important that your bobbin thread is unrolling in the correct direction. Now, holding the top thread, rotate the hand wheel towards you to move the needle. The top thread will catch the bottom bobbin thread and it'll pull it through the proper hole in the metal plate. Use a tool like scissors or a pin to pull the loop and pull the bobbin thread all the way through. Do not use your fingers. You do not want to stick your fingers under the needle. Now your machine is threaded and has a top and bottom thread and it's ready to use. So replace the cover on the bobbin and let's get started. On my first project, I bought a pillowcase that was way too long for my pillow. So I'm going to cut off the excess fabric off the side without the zipper and close up the pillowcase. Now, I haven't talked really about the machine yet. You may have noticed these three dials at the top. These dials control the tension, the stitch width, and the stitch length. If you don't know what you're doing and you just want to do a basic straight stitch, I just leave mine all in the middle, which is like the number three. For your pattern selection dial, you choose the straight stitch. Now using the foot presser lever, you're going to position your fabric underneath where you want it to be and then lower the foot presser down. And while you're holding the end of the thread, you're gonna turn the hand wheel towards you and you're gonna lower the needle to your starting point in the stitching. If you haven't pinned your fabric together like I have not done here, um, just make sure the edges are lined up neatly. Now, like before when you're starting to thread the bobbin, you hold the thread for just a second so that whenever you press down the foot pedal and start the machine, you don't end up losing your threads. These lines here on the machine are to help you keep the fabric straight. You do not have to pull the fabric through the machine from the back. The machine will do it for you. Your only job is to maneuver the fabric on your side, the front, to make sure that it is going into the machine straight. Do not pull. When you get to the end, you can use the reverse sewing lever here to make a back tack and reinforce the seams. Then lift the foot presser with a lever, and if the needle did not end in the up position, then you can manually rotate that hand wheel and lift that needle out of the fabric. You cannot remove the fabric if the needle is still pierced through it, so you gotta make sure that needle is up. Now let me show you this from another angle so you can see how I went backwards. This thing here is the reverse sewing lever. So while you're pressing the foot pedal, you need to press and hold this lever. And if you press and hold the foot pedal down, you're going to be sewing backwards. If you release it, then you're going to go back forwards again. So I'm going forward and backwards a couple of times just to show you how it works. If you're used to sewing by hand, this is the point in time where you normally would tie a knot and make sure that your stitching doesn't get pulled out. So this is sort of the way to do that here on the machine, and you can make sure that it reinforces that seam so you know that if you put it through the machine wash or something like that, you're not going to end up having to re-sew it again. Here's how the pillow turned out. This first side I'm showing you is the zipper side, which I didn't touch. The second side is the side that I made shorter and sewed shut. My main goal was to make it look consistent with the other side. My next project, hemming a couple pairs of jeans that I have. So normally the spools that come with these sewing machines are really small, but if you want to use a bigger spool, then you can stick the small spool and slide it into the big spool and then stick it on the spool pen. So that way you can buy the large spools which are a lot cheaper and they can be bought in bulk. So I have two pairs of pants that I'm going to be hemming. While they turned out well, there are a couple of things I would do differently next time and I'm going to point them out for you while I'm doing it. So for this project, I'm going to be using pins and I'm going to use it to test the length and make sure that the pant legs are even. And 
and I prefer longer pants so if I'm wearing my flattest shoes and I'm just pinning these pant legs as long as I can make them with I don't like my pants riding up and showing ankle while I sit. <laughs> so the trick here is to remove the flatbed attachment to make the sewing machine smaller so that you can fit the pant leg and slide it onto the machine. And here's where I would have changed things. The first thing I would have done is I would have ironed down this fabric before sewing it. Because I had a little bit of like puckering and uh, unevenness and that came from not having it flat. The next thing I would have done differently is I would have started at the inseam. Because when I use the reverse lever to back tack, there's a slightly thickened thread, and if I had put it on the middle of the seam, it would have disguised it better. So remember when you finish to lift the foot presser and turn the hand wheel to lift the needle out of the fabric before trying to remove it from the machine. Before doing the next pant leg, just make sure that they're even before sewing. I'm checking that the length that I folded on the inseam is identical to the other pant leg, so I can make sure I'm folding it back the same amount of fabric in their equal length. Now I'm going to show you how to make a mask with a bendable nose piece and a pocket for you to put in a filter. Take a piece of old cloth that is 100% cotton and cut out two rectangles that are 9 inches long by 6 inches wide. them down and place the inside part outside. We're going to sew up the three sides of the rectangle together, leaving the bottom open so you can slide in a filter. We're also going to use elastics for around the ear. Mine are around six inches long, but because some elastics are stiff and some are stretchier, I can only recommend measuring them on your face with the rectangles that you've cut out to see how long you actually need them. I'm using two different types of elastics and I made one of them slightly longer because that's just how stretchy it was. And since we're sewing our mask inside out, you have to put the elastics on the inside. If your elastics are flat and wide like mine are, you should also make sure that they don't twist. I've pinned all around the edges, and I'm placing an extra pin here to hold the elastic in place. That way whenever I'm sewing and I'm removing the pins, the elastic doesn't bounce back and get out of place. You should remove all the pins in your way of your sewing machine. If your machine goes over a pin, the needle of your machine could break and it will need to be replaced. Don't worry too much about the edges of your mask, because when you turn the mask inside out, they're going to be hidden on the inside. It only matters that the seam that you're sewing now is straight. Now I don't intend to make the three sides separately, I'm just going to do them all at once without cutting the thread. So we're going to do the same routine, the foot presser lever to lower the foot presser, Rotate the hand wheel toward you to lower the needle to your starting point and hold the threads before pushing the foot pedal and starting the machine. I also use the reverse lever to reinforce the seam at the beginning and before running the machine up the side. So if you use pins, it's helpful to have them all pointing the same direction with the head towards you to make removal easier. I 
things are gone. Now to change directions, you're going to lift the foot presser, remove any pins in your way, and rotate the mask. Put the foot presser back down and repeat the process. If I could take you back to my youth I'd show you what I wish I knew My will is strong with a place to live In the moment I hung that spoon The other ring of my wrist is gold Pairing with the light it pulls When I return from my skin and bone I'm remembering the words you told And here's where things got tricky for me because of the direction of the mask. It was just easier for me to rotate the mask the other way and then just sew backwards up the whole side. But that is definitely not what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> When you reach the end, you sew forward and backwards the same way to reinforce the seams. Now before I remove the mask of the machine, I'm just checking that all the elastics are secured where they should be. Now take it off the machine and turn your mask inside out. I'm going to be using several twist ties from the grocery store to make a nose piece. And remember that you want the nose piece on the top, and you're going to be leaving the bottom open for the filter. I'm going to make sure that the nose piece is in the center. A beginner mistake is to forget to hold the threads before pressing the foot pedal. And until you're experienced, you just gotta run through the steps really quickly in your head. Lower the foot press, rotate the hand wheel to lower the needle, hold the threads, slowly press the foot pedal to start. Don't pull the fabric through. Keep it straight. Now we're going to put folds in the mask. The mask should be about 3 inches in height. If you have fabric that's going to be in the front of the mask and the other for the back, make sure that the folds are going downwards in the front. I'm placing the pins a bit in the center again so that I can run it through the machine without removing the pins at all. And then you need to do the other side. Iron those folds into the mask if you want. And I had leftover material, but didn't have enough to make a mask, so I instead made a matching scrunchie. So for that leftover material, you just cut out a very long rectangle and sew the ends together to make a long cloth tube. The seam is nice and straight once you turn the tube inside out. I'm securing the leftover pieces of elastic into the tube. Then scrunch up the fabric and sew the other side. And when you've got the ends placed together and sew them together, you'll have a scrunchie to go over your ponytail. One that matches your mask. Even if you're not very experienced at using a sewing machine, it is still way easier and way faster to use a machine than it is to sew by hand. I definitely recommend giving it a try. Our next video is going to be a continuation of our garden series, so stay tuned for that. And I'm sorry it took so long to get this video done, but it was just a hard one to do. If you like the video, click the thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, click on the B. And I say I'll see you next week, but I know that's not true, so I'll see you next week. Maybe. Bye!